So they're obviously in control because they controlled game one pretty much from start to finish. They did. That's pretty hard to do yes. at Denver, where I will remind you the Nuggets were 34 and 7 at home. Westbrook, the game now is not designed for him. It's, de it's designed for Clay, Steph, Kyrie, Lillard. Shoot. Do you hear any players complaining about LeBron having control anywhere? You know why? Because it's been, it's been beneficial for all the players in the league. Chris Broussard here, and welcome to the brand new Hoops on Fox podcast. This podcast will give you your daily dose of all things NBA from Fox Sports, including the best content from Skip and Shannon, Nick Wright, plus special guests, fresh NBA content from myself, post-game interviews from NBA stars around the league, and much, much more. Up first, Chris Haynes is with Colin Coward to break down the Russell Westbrook shooting slump and the potential for a Ben Simmons trade. Member of the family, great to have you, and how are you? I'm doing fine. Oh, thanks. So I could have brought out the hammer uh, on Westbrook this morning. I thought you were. But I did not. And I, 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 I believe it is very hard in life. You're a 45-year-old executive, and all of a sudden, 10 years ago, tech takes over the world. And your son now, he's 15. He's on tech all day. He's on mm -hmm. Fortnite all day. Mm -hmm. But a 48-year-old executive, hey, be great at tech. I didn't grow up with tech. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to pivot. Westbrook, the game now is not designed for him. It's, de it's designed for Clay, Steph, Kyrie, Lillard. Shoot. No mid-range. I don't care. And I look at Westbrook, and he's not a broken player. He's, he's a hyper-athletic guard who is a relentless athlete. You, you're going to tell me the next five years he's going to click and become a great shooter. It's not who he is. Derrick Rose, that's not who Derrick Rose is. I, there's part of me that feels bad for Westbrook. The game has moved in a different direction, and it's not built perfectly for him anymore. Mm, you are being lenient here. I, I, I expect. I, expect I, saw you, I saw you tweeting last night and saying, what would you say? I said, wait, 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 wait. Is he hit a triple double yet? <laughs> I was for sure you're going to be relentless this morning and vicious. Couldn't I argue, though, you know, what do you do with Westbrook now? Okay. Well, let me say this. I, I get your point, but I, I will say this. There are still, I, I will still say, you know, the majority of the leagues, the majority of the point guards can't shoot like a Stephen Curry, right. like a Damian Lillard. So there's still, uh, there's still a spot for players like such as Westbrook, who has freakish athleticism, yeah. quick speed, burst of, um, uh, you know, of everything. So I would just say this. It's still up to Westbrook as key points in the game to make the right play. And if you're not such a shooter, then don't shoot a lot of threes. Go in and, and attack. Be relentless on the glass. And I think the problem with him is, is that, look, that three-point ball is killing OKC right now. They're, they were never good at it. They were They've never been awful. They're awful. And the fact that Portland is making so many – like, threes hurt. Threes hurt. And when you can't match that, you can't combat that, there's a real problem. And then that deficit gets higher and higher. And so I think for Westbrook, look, you know, I get what you're saying. He's never going to be those type of guys. We're talking about Steph and Dane. But – what he can do, do it to the best of his ability and stay away from shooting eight, seven, three-pointers a game. And so if you want to be efficient in your own right, play your own game. That's all he has to do. Here's a, a criticism I would levy on Westbrook. I, I don't like the defensive effort. Oh, First of all, man. Lillard's getting uncontested jumpers. Curry is left wide mm -hmm. open. Some of this, is it possible, and I'm not just blaming Westbrook, that – when, you're, when your offense goes in the NBA, your defense can suffer because mm -hmm. it gets into your head. I mean, let's be honest. It, defense matters, but it's probably a 75-25 split. Offense is more important than defense. I don't like Russell's defense. I don't like OKC's defense. You're letting a good three-point shooting team. Portland last night must have had seven wide-open threes. Paying attention to detail has always been an issue of Russ, particularly when you're talking about the defensive end. Yeah. You look at, you know, look, look at his frame and everything. Like, there's no reason why he shouldn't be an all-NBA defender out there. Uh, from year to year, but he's not. And I, I don't know necessarily if it's his offense struggling on that end is why he's struggling on the defensive end as well, but you seeing it. Like, Seth, Seth Curry can't get off. He can't get wide-open shots. No. You can't allow guys like Farouk Aminu 
to hit, to hit three pointers on you. Those are demoralizing shots. And so that's what I'm saying. Like I, I get your point. You're being lenient, Kyle. I, I, like you evolving as a person. Cause you talking about you just mentioned that you talking about 45 year olds can't adapt to time. You're adapting and changing and evolving. Cause I, I was expecting. I was I thought I was going to defend Russ. I thought I was <laughs> going to defend him. I, I thought you were coming with the heat today. But now I find myself. I got a pile on because of the lack of you not doing so. Yeah, I I, I had the anvil in the car. I left it there. <laughs> I just thought, I thought, you know, it's easy today. He was minus 27, Lillard's plus uh, 27. I could have brought up the envy. Like, I won the argument. The old, this old thing yeah. about the internet, they say Facebook won the internet. Stop uh-huh. arguing. I won the argument. Russ is hard to play with. He's not built for the playoffs. But in the end, I've just seen this so many times. I saw it with Derrick Rose a lot. I'm mm-hmm. like, the game's moving away from Derrick Rose's strength. It's mm-hmm. Ezekiel Elliott, the game moved right into his wheelhouse. He can catch. Z- Lavian Bell, mm-hmm. the game moved right into Lavian. Lavian's not the fastest back. God, he's got great hands. Mm-hmm. And so all of a sudden, Le'Veon Bell goes from, yeah, he's a good runner. He didn't have breakaway speed. To, oh, my God, you get 85 catches, 200 carries. And let's move to this, though. If Oklahoma City l- loses the series, and I don't think Portland's ever lost a series when they lead 2-0. Okay. Billy Donovan gets run, right? And, I, and I, I'm saying this. Okay, at some point, Sam Presti had Harden, chose Westbrook. Had Durant, didn't hug him. Victor Oladipo, let him go. At some point, Billy Donovan's taking the hits here. There's one shooter on this roster. That's not Billy Donovan's mm-hmm. fault. Mm-hmm. Is he going to get whacked? Look, he, they gave him extension before before the season. You know, I was surprised that they did that. So, so was I. Uh, because I'm like, wh- what did he do? What, what has the team done to, to, to warrant that? But at the same time, when you're talking about the, the holes that, that's in this roster, shoot, you need shooting. In this game today, if you don't have premium shooting, then you don't have a chance. Because threes add up. And when they keep adding up, that, 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 that margin is a 10-point margin, 15-point margin, 20-point margin. It happens faster, faster than it has ever well, happened Oklahoma in the game Oklahoma City is not built to go on a 14 nothing run, Portland is. Yes. You know, Golden State is. Uh, Boston can be. Houston can be. Utah's good, but they're not. The teams that don't shoot threes, it's hard to go on a 14-0 run. That used to be seven possessions. And that's why, getting to your point, I think you were alluding to it, that's a management. That's not Billy that's Donovan's a, that's issue. Not, that's not Billy Donovan. That's... That's the kind of the the way they constructed their team is the the similar route in the way the Lakers went about doing doing business. This tough pat- guys, yeah, tough defensive guys, guys did, yeah. not enough shooters. By the way, listen, Hainsy, I gotta tell you, give me thirty seconds on camera here. Tonight's one of the greatest nights in America. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna understand this. You're gonna think I'm a weirdo. Tonight, the NFL releases its schedule. Oh, I, so I'm fun! So glad my wife's under the weather. I don't have to entertain anybody. I can go well, home. That's mean. No, I love her to death. Just yeah, get upstairs. I got to watch this. I got to see who the Jaguars play. Tonight is the best <laughs> night for nerds in America. I'm going to be sitting there all night just taking notes. You on, get to play win loss. It's oh, the best. It's the best night. All right, let's move to Chris Haynes. <laughs> he, NBA guys are like, I don't get it. It's just yeah, a schedule. You, you lost me there, Colin. Okay. Uh, um, I was told last night um, from a source I, I really trust. Monty Williams' interview with the Lakers, he is their number one choice. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean he'll get the job because Monty's probably going to get the Sixers gig if they lose to Brooklyn or the Raptors. Mm -hmm. So let me just start with this. That means I think Ty Lue's the Lakers' second choice. I think Ty Lue's going to get it. I was told last night, Chris, the Lakers are concerned about the optics that it's now LeBron's team. Have you Mm -hmm. heard stuff like that? I I wrote that last week, actually, when um – when Magic Johnson um, relieved right. himself, but yeah, they, they, that was always concern. And you know, I was told, you know, when I wrote that for Yahoo, I was told that when Magic and Palinka were compiling potential coaching candidates, then obviously they brought up Tyronn Lue and Mark Jackson. And I was told at one point, Jenny Buss said, you know, I'm concerned with the perception of LeBron running things. This is a bus ran organization. We want to make sure that is clear. And so. I understand all that, but at the same time, Colin, I think it's very important, especially where the Lakers are right now, it's very important to screw optics, screw perception. Bring in the right candidate. Bring in somebody who you think is going to be able to do this job at a high level and bring this franchise back to prominence. If optics and if perception is something that's concerning you and that's going to deter you from hiring the right guy, then I think that's 
that the Lakers franchise is going to continue to be in disarray. Um, I, I want to go to the Warriors for a second because I think Golden State's going to win that series. I think the Clippers, and I said this repeatedly through the season, they're really one of the best stories in the league this year. Mm-hmm. Milwaukee's a great story. The Clippers shouldn't be here. They traded mm. their best player in the middle of the season. In the last yeah. several years, they've traded their four best players, Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, Tobias Harris, and DeAndre Jordan. Mm. They shouldn't be here. Yeah. Lou Williams is their best player. I love Lou. Mm. If he's your best player, you're probably not a playoff team. They are. Their bench is the best in the league. Yeah. Doc Rivers has done a remarkable job. But I'm watching this Warriors-Clippers series, and you know what I'm seeing, Chris? I'm thinking Kawhi Leonard's looking at that team saying, yeah. man, and the only thing they're missing is me. <laughs> I, could I make the argument uh-huh. that even losing this series by the Clippers, this has been an incredible advertisement as a free agent destination that we may have reached the tipping point with the lowly Clippers. They are now seen as a viable place to go for stars. I mean, even before the series started, you know, we all picked Golden State to, to advance. Um, I actually picked Golden State to sweep them. And I, you know, I have some Clippers execs killing me about that prediction. But, hey, uh, I, I think right now the Clippers are putting themselves in a great position, not just to lure Kawhi, but have some other free agents, you know, start looking their way. Because they're one, you know, you can look at them, they're one piece away from going to that next level. I don't know if Kawhi puts it to that next level of championship contender team, but definitely if you get Kawhi's signature, you got you're going to get other guys on board willing to come over for 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 cheaper, and they Clippers have cap space where they can get two max guys. So right now you look at it, great coaching, they got a great culture, they got guys who pl- play their roles and know you know know what the, know how to stay within a themselves. Tremendous giving culture. Nah. Nobody's seeking minutes and points. Nope. So you bring a couple stars on board. All of a sudden, the Clippers are in a place where they've never been before. Yeah, I think we're there. I, I want to talk about a team that is fascinating for a, a lot of reasons, the Philadelphia 76ers. Mm-hmm. Now, they're not really a national story yet, but I find them to be absolutely fascinating. I think outside of the Warriors, they have the best talent in the league, slightly over Boston and Houston. Um, you have the Monty Williams situation, Brett Brown. When I watch the Sixers play, I don't know what I'm getting night to night. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm getting night to night with Simmons. Jimmy Butler doesn't get along with people. If I said to you one year from today, what are the Sixers? First of all, do you think they beat Brooklyn? I do. I, I, think, I think their think size they, is too much. I think they do. I think they've got a they've got a chance against Toronto, but a year from now, who is in Philly and who is not in Philly? Because this team's got four legitimate high end players. That's a good question. You know, obviously they they gave up a lot to acquire Tobias Harris and Jimmy Butler. No question. So it's hard to believe that they will let even one of those guys walk away in free agency this summer. With that being said, I think they bring back one of those guys. And if I had to pick, probably they bring back Tobias. So this time next year, I think Jimmy Butler is probably somewhere else. That's just my... Thoughts in my, I, my I'm going to throw something at you. You trade Simmons. Now, it sounds crazy. Mm-hmm. I'll have my big, and I have two pretty good shooters on the wing. Mm-hmm. You can get a ton for Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons does not, I've been told, get along great with teammates. He didn't make the Australian national team. Now, I'm not saying this because I don't like Ben Simmons, mm-hmm. but if you look at Ben Simmons' game, I don't think it fits Embiid. I don't, and Jimmy Butler doesn't fit anybody. Yeah. Could I? I'm just throwing this out there. If you had Embiid, your center anchor is there. You have two athletes, Butler and Tobias, on the wing. You need more shooters. JJ Reddick's aging. Mm-hmm. Is it impossible to think they'd make that move? I don't think Simmons fits their team. I, I don't see them making that move within a year's time. Because I, I think you got to let Ben, let the maturation process evolve. Look, this this the thing. Ben wants to be a point guard. And he can't handle that position. He thrives in that position. But in that position nowadays, you need spacing at that position. He's somebody who's reluctant to shoot. And so I, I, I think it's going to get to a point that if Ben Simmons, if they don't trade Ben Simmons, if he's a, a mainstay there, he has to obviously develop some range, but also he has to be open to move into the small four spot. Yeah. So so that, then you can have a shooter at the point guard spot and shooting guard spot. 
You know, so because they really, you know, Jimmy Butler and Tobias, they're decent, but they're not. You need premium shooters. Yeah, this, this Philadelphia, Multiple. Philadelphia is a really fascinating team. I don't think these pieces work. And I love three of the pieces I love. Embiid, Simmons, yeah. and Butler are unbelievable talents. Next, Steven Jackson joins Nick and CeCe to dissect the possibility of Ty Lue coaching the Lakers. I'm just fed up with the LeBron too much control. I mean, yeah. who should they give control to in the organization? <laughs> but you don't. Do you hear any players complaining about LeBron having control anywhere? You know why? Because it's been it's been beneficial for all the players in the league. He's done it for just it just hasn't been beneficial for him. The moves he's been making since he's been in the league has been beneficial for every player in the league. So if, like CC said, if I had a conversation with anybody on the Lakers and Kobe's not there, it has to be LeBron. Nobody else is smarter in the organization about basketball. I I'm gonna go back to it because you know I'm always the real one. They just upset that LeBron has been in control of his career since day one, and he's a young black man that knows his worth. That's just basically what the problem is. And to your point about how he's players don't complain, you're not talking about just his teammates. No he one. He has created, he has shifted the power dynamic within the NBA mm -hmm. from team to player. Right. It was, the, the big three in Boston was put together by Jenna's friend Danny Ainge. My guy. The, since then, though, the, the major moves in the league have been player initiated. Mm -hmm. They have been, it was LeBron's move the first time, the second time, for whether people liked it or not, Kevin Durant's move, mm -hmm. and the Kawhi Leonard last year, the Anthony Davis attempted to this year, and the way they have shifted that. Now, on this specific instance, I unless and until the Lakers hire Sam Presti or R.C. Buford or Bob Myers or anyone who actually knows how to run an NBA front office and has shown that ability, then of course they should lean on LeBron to a degree. But I don't even think they're leaning on him in this coaching search. I think it's just narrative. I think it's just optics. I think it's just, well, LeBron has the relationship with Ty Lue, so if we hire him, how will that look? And uh, what better option do they have? <laughs> I mean, because <laughs> for me, especially with the basketball team, which I have seen, that a player can immediately become a coach, can immediately become an executive, can immediately go and work in television because there's so many things that basketball, because you're learning all those things. As a football player, you only basically know one side of the ball. So you don't see that transition. So basketball players, they've been dominant in the NBA from a player to coach to front office standpoint for 40 years. LeBron is a basketball savant. Forget if you like him. Forget if you don't. And I, Shaquille O'Neal told me this. I went to a practice with the um, Cavs, and he sat me down. Hey, see, Here we go. Yeah. Hey, see. Dim the lights. Yeah, the, the, the young boy. Smartest basketball player I've ever known. Remember the sets? Yo, see, the coach was calling some. LeBron called out their plays and everything. This was just in a regular practice before mm -hmm. the championships and all that. So we need to give LeBron credit for the type of basketball mind that he has. Mm -hmm. He has the type of basketball mind in 30 years. If he's not Jerry West, I'll be shocked. So, right. so what does that mean? Does that mean that he, the, the, the Lakers should just go out and hire Ty Lue, bring him in, they won a title with him, he gets LeBron, LeBron respects him? Is that what we're all sort of gearing towards? And for some reason, Jeannie Buss doesn't want to do that? Well, I mean, if she wants to win, she has to have she has to cater to LeBron because at the end of the day, he he is he's he's gonna get this ship going. The guys that's gonna come play, they're gonna come play because of LeBron. The guys that are gonna buy into Ty Lue, they're gonna buy in because LeBron buy in. Everything goes through LeBron, so you have you ha you have to bring in the coach, you have to bring in the players, you have to go through him if you're not using Kobe. The reason why they have to give LeBron more power is because on the initial, on the initial engagement, LeBron gave them all the power. LeBron came to Los Angeles without the recruitment. Man, he could have went on a world tour. I'm going here. I'm going here. I'm going to Philadelphia, man. I need to talk to Joel Embiid. Did he could, San Antonio. Did he could, oh, San Antonio, for me, Would've I been was perfect. like, man, let's go. Let's, let's talk to Pop yes, at least. Indeed. No, he didn't. Sat in his palatial estate. Magic Johnson had the address. Pulls up to the front. No worries. No courting. No dating. No, and none of that. LeBron... And LeBron, the fun in his contract, in his contract demands, gave them the no trade, gave it back. Right. Don't need. I'm going to give you a max deal, four years. That's the max he could do. Gave them those things. So LeBron gave them control. 
Now, in trying to get this organization back on the right track, they need to be able to give some of that control back to LeBron, and that's the normal way of doing business in the NBA. Short-sighted people and businesses are concerned about optics. Smart businesses are concerned about results. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use you as an example for a moment. When you were, I don't know this for a fact, but I, I got a real good feeling. When you were first trying to get into broadcast and get into TV, mm -hmm. I guarantee there was an executive in a room somewhere that hadn't seen you on TV, didn't know you. They're like, ah. Eh, it, what are people going to say if we hire the – wasn't he involved and didn't he punch a fan? And, like, wasn't there an incident outside a strip club with a gun? Like, right. And, and I'm sure there was, the, like, the optics of hiring Steven Jackson. And somebody smart in that room said, man, that's a two-day headline on a stupid blog. W what we are going to get is good results on television mm -hmm. for two years. And so they – I don't know took a chance in the right word, but they went with it, mm -hmm. and it paid off. The, the optics on hiring Ty Lu is an, a Bill Plaschke column in the Los Angeles Times. For five minutes that, in that the is, I, can, I can read you the headline right now. Welcome to the world of the Los Angeles LeBrons. And it's a story about how it's his franchise and how, mm -hmm. it, how, how Dr. Buss would be up. Fine. If you win 55 games and you're in the Western Conference Finals, none of it matters. Mm -hmm. And if you, if, you hire, if you hire Bill Walton to replace Luke Walton and you win 35 games, none of it matters. Like... It is what is the best move. And if someone, people give me a hard time, they think I have an ulterior motive with Ty Lue. I know Ty a little bit, but I'm not friends with Ty. I have no real deep relationship with Ty Lue. Present me a better option. But yeah, you're also right, not saying right. this is the best option. Mm -hmm. But if it fact. is, there you should go. be able Speaking to go fact. for it. If, there is, yep. if, if Terry Stotts gets fired, if the Blazers go from 2-0 to 4-2 and he lose and he gets fired in Portland, and someone says, hey, I think Terry, I'll listen to that. You yes. bring you bring me an established mm -hmm. coach with Stotts doesn't even have it with a championship pedigree or a deep playoff pedigree. I'll listen to it. But if it's Jawan Howard, who I don't know, Monty, Monty Williams, Williams, who eh, or the other options that we've heard, Jason Kidd, Ty Lue's the best option. It's an added bonus. He won a championship. Oh yeah, with LeBron. Now Gilbert Arenas is back with Christine Leahy to describe his time in the NBA. Does it bother you in general that you're not more widely recognized as one of the best scorers in the last 20 years? No, because it was, I didn't really get to, like, I, it's like I caught fire, but didn't get to really capitalize on it. Like, for what I did, for people to still remember me is beyond me, to be honest. Like, Why? you know, three years. It's, that's it. It was three, yeah. <laughs> three years, you know, it's like, really, and then two years of real greatness. So uh -huh. it's like, I didn't really get to, you know, I got hurt at 25. So yeah. I didn't really get to see, you know, like what Curry seeing now, what Durant seeing, what, you know, um, James Harden sees, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I didn't, I didn't get to that level. So it's like, for you to still know me, it's kind of like, wow, wow, okay, I appreciate it. But, you know, I don't look at it like somebody said, you're going to be a Hall of Fame. I was like, no. I didn't really get to I didn't really get to expand on what I did. It was just a quick in and out. Following Skip and Shane dissect the Spurs loss to the Nuggets after losing a 19 point lead. Control of this series. Spurs. Oh, you've you seen Wanna the say lot. that louder? It was so light. Really? So faint. Huh? The Spurs! Thank you. You know who they're, it is. They're not the purrs, they're the Spurs. It made me sick, yeah. and I'm glad, because yeah. I know you go going to come here and gloat today, yeah. okay. and they've been up 2-0. Mm. The Spurs are in control because they did what they wanted to do, to say the series doesn't start till the road team wins on the opposing mm -hmm. team. Court. And it started early. It started the first game. Mm -hmm. So you going back home, Coach Popovich, sure, he would like to have been greedy, mm. take sweet stakes, win both games, and he was in position to do that up 19. But to go back, to your building for two games and you're split 1-1, Coach Popovich has to feel well. Uh, they played well. Uh, De DeMar DeRozan and, and LaMarcus Aldridge, they've had no answer for those two guys. LaMarcus Aldridge had it going, Skip, and then he only took one shot in the fourth quarter. Had two points. DeMar DeRozan kept it going, mm. but <clears throat> they let Jamal Murray, I think Derek White must have, he must have stubbed his toe or something because mm. Jamal Murray lit him up. Mm. 21. Mm. Made this a series. Now they need to go on down to San Antonio, mm -hmm. get one of those games, make it another series so it goes mm. seven and not win. My case will do like I'm supposed to. Mm. But anyway, the Spurs are in control. They did what they needed to do. They went, they got one of these two games. Now they're going home. Mm. It's their series to lose. Mm. So 
I thought you told me the Spurs weren't even going to make the playoffs to start with. Yeah, but and I said, you, you guaranteed me that Denver's going to win this series, but now games. you're conceding? Yeah. Are you conceding the bat? No, 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 I'm not conceding oh, the bat. Oh, I said, you we, said the Spurs are in control? They are. Oh, interesting. They're, they're in the catbird seat, oh. the proverbial <laughs> catbird oh, seat. Oh, got it, got it. So they're obviously in control because they controlled game one pretty much from start to finish. They did. That's pretty hard to do yes. at Denver, where I will remind you the Nuggets were 34 and 7 at home. Guess what? That was the best home record in all of the NBA. Yes, it was. So the Spurs went in there and controlled game one, and then they controlled game two twice because they had two 19 point leads last night. They, they did. had one with 828 left in the second quarter. That's pretty good. And 428 left in the third quarter, 19 and 19. And what happened? You know what happened. The Nuggets are a really good team. They're a really talented team. They're probably more talented than the Spurs are. Probably. They're a little younger, but they're probably a little more talented. And they were obviously the more desperate team. And my team took foot off gas, as Golden State did at home the other night. And bad things started to happen. We took your foot off the gas. Right, oh, so now you're a we, but you I mean, the we. Nuggets, the Nuggets, the Nuggets oh, did. Okay, all right. Yeah, we. I, would, okay. I played in Denver. So Jamal Murray owed his team because he missed a crucial late shot in game one yep. in their building. They would have tied it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they would have tied the game. I think it was for the win, yeah, I as I recall. It wasn't? I think it was for the win. Okay, yeah. Okay? But he missed, his, as Jenny pointed out, his first eight shots last night, and I was highly impressed. He just willed home his team in ways, because he can really shoot it, in ways Russell Westbrook can't shoot his team back into games. Jamal Murray just got going, and once he got going, he went twilight zone hot. He went crazy yeah. hot. And to your point about Derek White attempting to guard him, what they started to do was they put – a, a man who's literally a Rocky Mountain by himself, <laughs> the Joker. They put Jokic out on the perimeter picking Pretty for him pick and, roll. and just knocked Derek White down time after time again. And Ernestine turned to me and said, is it legal for him to be that big? I said, <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's like a monster. She yeah. kept saying, he's a monster. Yes. He's just too big, True. right? Can you be that big, <laughs> that thick, that that heavy, that and that agile? But you know what, so Skip? True. In this comeback... The guy that I'm going to mention three guys guys before I get to Jokic. Obviously, Jamal Murray went crazy in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter. But Gary Harris Jr. in the, the fourth, third, in the third, third quarter. He saved him. 14, because yeah, this was about to get out of hand, Skip. Mm -hmm. And he kept them close, and they ended up winning the third quarter by three mm -hmm. points. And Paul Millsap. Mm. He, he's beastie, too. They, he, and uh, they called that foul on him. That wasn't no foul that he did on, uh, uh, mm. on Aldridge, Skip. You mm. know that, too. So you're hanging on every possession of Spurs games. I no. thought you said they were broccoli. I, I thought mean, you said you can't watch them. I mean, this and now, you know minute. what? I think you're turning into a closet Spurs No, fan. I'm not. But I knew we were going to talk about this game, really? especially. I, things were not looking very good for no. me early mm -hmm. on, no. especially in that third quarter when they were down 19. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, Skip got to be the lucky. I said, why can't I win a bet against him? I said, this is the luckiest man alive. Why don't he go to Vegas? He should have put down 100000 on Tiger to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I should have. Because <laughs> you you lucky. There's lucky. no way. I'm just smart. Skip. No, 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 you're not smart. There's no way you should have won a bet in which your team was down 31 points. Mm. You should not have won that bet, so stop saying. I like the Clippers to win that game. I just didn't know how. Skip. <laughs> they were down 31 points to the defending champ mm. with the best player and the final finals MVP two times. Mm. And they came from 31 down. You know you're supposed to have conceded that. You're supposed to call you me said, and say. You keep telling me Kevin Durant's way overrated. No, no, no. I can't tell. Mm. But I just want to know one thing. Let that have been LeBron James. Mm -hmm. And his team it lost to 31 back points. To LeBron. Ooh, we, we beat Steph Curry up and, mm. and Draymond like we would have done LeBron. Mm. If that had been LeBron lost a 31 point lead as the number one seed. To an AC? I agree. And didn't talk to the media. And didn't talk to them. Oh, Kevin on. Bayless. This is what I'm talking about. Kevin this Durant. is the drama. Kevin Durant has two feet out the door, and those are two big feet. Yeah, that are out and the that's door. the toxicity right? that's around Kevin Durant, mm -hmm. huh? Okay. Is that the toxicity we talking about? They got some toxicity in the oh, locker okay. room. I think they got a little dissension. I think there's a lack of trust. Like he's just gonna jilt us and leave. Well, you got some. You got some more toxicity coming. Really? On Friday? Don't don't don't, don't, don't play again Friday. When the Nuggets play y'all again? Thursday. Thursday. It is yeah. Thursday. Y'all about to catch another egg. Uh, oh, well, now, what, you, what, you just said that they're in control. They are. What are you trying to do, the reverse? No, 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 no. no. Skip, 
You guys are controlled. I don't know you're which going, side of your no, mouth no, you're talking yeah, about. You're going home. Oh. You're tied. You are in control. Yeah. But I want you to catch an L. Huh. Well, you want it, but yes. are you predicting it? No, I'm not predicting oh, okay. anything. Thank you. It's going seven games. Huh. What did I tell you before this series started? This will be the toughest of the three series San Antonio is about to play. The three no, no, y'all series. Middle three. Three. You're not playing three. This is a hard one. This is tough. This is seven versus two. They are the two seed for a reason. And last night, I would have won if the referees... And don't do that. Wait Steve. a second. <laughs> If the referees hadn't allowed the home crowd, and you know that crowd, it gets loud there. <laughs> the crowd began to control the referees' whistles. And the turning point of that game, because it was still right there to be won with 441 left in the basketball game. Mm -hmm. Could we see what happened to Bryn Forbes as he what tried happened? to stroke another beautiful three from the perimeter? Boom! Oh. He gets knocked down. They yeah. went Broncos on him. They went. They, it was like a Broncos double team. He tried team. to sell it. He tried to sell he it. He didn't try to sell he it. He got knocked down by two of them, and they do, they swallowed their whistles. That ain't Clay Thompson. That's not hey, Steph Curry. He didn't get that You know what? James Harden would have gotten four free throws off yeah. that. Yeah, four. They would have said, you get four free no, throws because you got Ford, knocked down. But Brent Forbes Brent not Forbes getting that call. hasn't earned that kind of right. call. So what happened uh, within seconds? Greg Povich, because Jamal Murray eventually made another shot, and it was going crazy, so he tried to run up the sideline and catch a ref's attention to call timeout. And the ref turned and said, get oh, back in your box. You know who, you know who gave him that tech? Mm. The only guy to throw LeBron James out of the game. Is that that Kane guy? Fitzgerald. Oh. I told you he's going to get you. Mm. You loved it. That's mm. LeBron. LeBron has to know better. Pop needs to know better, not to mess he with Kane. teed him up. Not to he mess with Kane. He teed him up. He teed LeBron it, up. It completely changed the game. The floodgates opened after this right here. You're, you're watching what happened. Get him, Kane. How can you tell me to get back in my box? I'm trying to call time. That's Kane. I'm trying to get your attention. The citizens came. Citizen Kane? Okay. Ah. Way to go. I don't like when it shifts the momentum, though, because then the whole game, the whole knows. game just went crazy. You can't, skip. You can't be running out on the court. Yeah, well, you can do you just to get their attention. Well, we gonna, they're going up the court. Hey, I want time. I want time. Time out. Time out. What are you doing to me? I like the way Ed Malloy do it. Ed Malloy do that thing quiet. Yeah, little little tiny T. <laughs> yeah, he got Ed Malloy. He got that like this here. Some well, the referees choked last night, but it's okay. No, no, stop doing that, yeah, Skip. Because we proved to Denver we could have two 19-point leads in the same game on their home and floor. And collapsed. Mm. And collapsed. No, we just got shot. No, you heart. got collapsed. Yeah. Say it with me. It, it, it was like Ray Allen no, 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 reborn. No, 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 no. no we're not doing no Ray Allen. Is yeah. it no Ray Allen? He went Ray Allen. No, he did. Yeah, no, he no. did. I've never seen anything like it. First of all, Ray only hit like one shot in that fourth quarter. Mm. So stop. And Jamar you know Murray scored 21. Speaking of Derek White's defense, how about his offense? What did I tell you? This team goes as Derek White goes. Do you see what your stats tell you? Yeah. He shot 11 times last night and made seven of them. Yes. He shot one time in the fourth quarter. You're talking about LaMarcus. How about Derek White? Getting the ball in his hands. You know what? He's, he's tired. No, he's not tired. Yes, he. he no, you I'm see with Jamal Murray, mm -mm. that altitude, trying to no. come up and fight through that pit. Let him because he held off the first rush at the first 19 point. Mm -hmm. He was the one who shot them right back. Oh, I give credit. He hey, he dunking on people. No. I'm like, oh, look at Lou, look at Derek Lou, White. Look at Derek White. He can stroke those threes too. Actually, I got a cousin he's named a Derek fourth. White. Do you really? I do. Okay. <laughs> and can he dunk? No. Mm -mm. Can't dunk. He uh. <laughs> mm. How should I put this? Uh, mm. Right now, he's in Club Med. Oh, yeah. one of those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, he be sorry. Mm. He should have been sorry before he did what he okay. did. But that's neither here nor there. Mm. I think game four, I might bet you on game four. I feel the Nuggets going to get that one. Yep. Oh, they better get one of these or they're going to be done, man. No, we don't. Huh? Yeah. We go back, we, win, and then we go back, win game six, we, and then win game seven. Okay. Finally, Matt Barnes and Katino Mobley are with Whitlock and Wiley to break down the KD versus Patrick Beverly rivalry. He's apologizing for disappointing his owner, his coach. But after the game, he kind of was a little feisty and saying he kind of enjoyed getting into it with Patrick Beverly. Question, do you like KD's attitude here? I like his attitude now. Um, I like his attitude in the moment. Uh, I thought it was a lighthearted tussle, and it, it, it lasted three, four quarters, but I think the referees kind of took it a different way than the spirit of which they were engaging. One, that is Patrick Beverly, and two, KD did everything with a smile. So mm -hmm. it, it never got to a point where I thought, oh, my God, this is going to boil over into some issues. But I do like him taking a deep breath, realizing what this fan base is doing, hanging on to his every word and breath. Is he staying? Is he going? So everything gets translated in that lens. And he's like, yeah, you know what? I'm here for y'all. 
It may only be a couple more months, but you know what? Let me respect y'all in this moment. Led the league in technicals during yeah. the regular season. Did he get season. suspended? Did he get, Led, did he's he, got two, one game into the playoffs, five. That's why five they flop in soccer. Suspended. They use up all the time they can. You use up all the timeouts you got, but you don't go too far. He didn't go too far and get you, suspended. You know how you've been around people before, Matt, right? All of us, right? You've been around people before where well, you have you and your group of guys, right? And it gets rowdy and y'all loud. And y'all may be saying some derogatory stuff, not like, the racist stuff, but just cursing at each other, being guys. Mm. And then people that's not around you guys, they get like nervous, like, whoa, whoa, you guys okay? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I think that's what the referees did because where we're from, you talk crap to each other. Mm-hmm. It, it brings, it builds the energy. So I have, nothing, I have no problem with that. Now, listen, if that game was close, I seriously doubt right. Kevin would have done that. Same. You're up about 20, right? Like, mm-hmm. Patrick Beverly is like a little... He's like a fly. He's a gnat. Mm-hmm. It bothers you so much. Love it. But yet, we're used to that. He's from Baltimore, D.C., that area, where we're from. You like to talk crap. And then that, he, he got caught up in that. I, I, I don't, you know, it's, I don't feel there's something wrong with that. I mean, for me, it's the refs are always overreacting. I yes. mean, like you said, this, is, this was lighthearted, spirit of the game. The fans loved it. You saw when KD got kicked out, his teammates were all for him. I like it from a standpoint of, you know, he's letting Patrick Beverly know all these little antics you have going on aren't going to work. And like Kat said, if it was a closer game, KD wouldn't wouldn't have got, I, I guarantee he wouldn't got that second take and got kicked out. But I like him just letting him know, like, you know, you can do all you want. I still have my, my normal night. You know, I shot 50%, 25 points, you know, five assists, three rebounds, whatever the stat line was. It was pretty consistent. And they were up by 20. Um, so... You know, what Pat Beverly does doesn't always show up on the stat sheet. You, you want a person like that on your team, but, he, he, I mean, he's guarding the best player in the world, so he's going to have to do more than that to get how, him How can we not argue that Patrick Beverly didn't win here, though? He, he got KD tossed out of a game. He now has two technical fouls. KD fell for the bait. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, and look, somebody, I don't play chess, somebody to, told me, hey, a pawn took out a bishop, and that's big. I mean, so yeah, I was like, I okay, think, respect like I, said, I, I think if the game was closer, it would have yeah, never happened. I guess you don't win. KD, 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 led, KD, right, KD led the league in techs, but KD's very calculated. He might go the rest of the playoffs and not get one more tech. I feel that. You know that. what I mean? So I just think two techs is a big, if you look at the big picture. The guy that led the league in technicals, if you had to bet, you think he's getting no more technicals in the playoffs? I seriously I, doubt he'll get... What you do, now, what you're doing, you're playing with the words. He won't, <laughs> for real, no. He won't get technicals when games are that tight. And I don't think he that will He's not a Draymond Green. Right. And, and he understands the history of what it did for the Golden State Warriors a few years back. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think, like I said, even though he led the league in techs, they were calculated. I think he knew what he, when, I used to, I used to have calculated techs. I knew if I did something, I was going to get a tech, and I knew what it would do for my team around, up and down, whatever the situation would be. And I know Katie's the same way. He knows he's too important to be out of games when it matters. Right. But last, that last game didn't matter. Right. But when you're the best player on your team, two-time finals MVP, I'm just not sure you should be taking these kind of risks. And, 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 and y'all said he's not Draymond Green. The longer he stays in Golden State, the more he starts to look like the seven-foot <laughs> shooting Draymond Green. I mean, he, he you do admit his personality has changed. For the better. It has. For the better. I Thank you. So. Can you better. say that, Matt? I think for, for the, the better. better. He you was know what I mean? Quiet. He got he, pushed yeah. around. He was, yeah, like, he was always kind of in his own little bubble before, and I yeah. think Draymond brought it. Like, this is who KD has always been. I think Draymond brought it out yeah, of him, and I don't, see it, I don't see it as a bad thing. I see it as I'm the best player. When I want to talk, I'm going to talk. When I need to play, I'm going to play. But he just let Pat- Patrick Beverly know, about, like, we're not going with this. Great point by Matt. How about this? LeBron James, for so many years, just about, about a few years back, he started saying that he was the best. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been 16 years. We all know he's the best. One of the best things smoking, right? Like sliced bread, just amazing. No. Now, he's saying it now. You could have been saying that then, too. KD's, he's, he's growing up. And I'm not going to let you keep bashing me right. every single time for all these right. years. And then now I'm not going to keep saying nothing. No, I'm going to I am the best. Now what you going to do? And it's right. smart in, in, the, in the first playoff game. Look, it's a series that more than likely we all know they're going to be. Yeah. going to be stop. Quick. But I, I got a tone setting moment. Coaches used to right. always say I need a right. tone setter. Yeah. Like go out there. And he knew it wasn't going to have impact on the game. We're still right. going to win. But I'm going to let you know, Patrick Beverly, I'm going to let the whole playoffs know. Yeah, you're not going to keep bullying. It ain't these. coming that way. But, but, He's stepping into Draymond's lane. That was uh, Draymond's not role. No. Not necessarily. No. Not necessarily. Only reason you say that is because he's on Draymond's, screen, uh, on Draymond's team. team. Yeah. If he wasn't on Draymond's team, you wouldn't say it like that. You, would, you wouldn't even compare the two mm. like that. Mm. But because he's with Draymond and DeMarcus, right? Like, oh, you know what? 
yeah, you are kind of like that too. Nah, he's, listen, he is 1A, 1B, best player in the league. Yeah. So, that's, so, that's great. Yeah, but I'm saying. That's great. He can also make mistakes. Everyone yeah. does. And, Everyone. and get does. caught up in, again, just remember what that team is. Because of Boogie, because of Draymond, I'm not sure if I want KD, my best player, setting that tone. Let Boogie and Draymond be I the emotional guy. But those two are different than KD. Like Matt said, KD will not do that if it means, when that um, game is It tight. means more when KD it does it. More. I mean, everyone's coming to him, so when you have that person coming back at people, it means more. You know you know what you're going to get from Boogie and, and Draymond. Sometimes wild card, you got to pull him back. But KD was smiling the whole time. I like He jumped in his face and laughed. You know what I mean? Like I said, if it was an important game or it was back and forth, it wouldn't happen. But like I said, I Y'all think got it's calculated. Kids. Mm. Y'all got kids. Mm-hmm. And when kids do little bad things that, oh... And then you just, do you sit around and go, oh, they won't do it when it really matters. No. Or- <laughs> no, I know where you're going, but you know what I do respect? And this is why I like it's KD doing it, not Draymond. If Draymond would have responded, we're like, here you go again. He hasn't learned. KD doing it out of character, my bad kid actually doing something good or the good kid doing He's something He's not bad. out of character. He led the league in touch. He shot year. 50% that game. Stephen Curry had 40, shooting from 40 feet he out. Did his it job. was a fun thing, and he's yeah. laughing when he's doing it. It was more of a, like, Sunday play, early in the morning. But set the tone. Set the tone. Yeah. Set the tone for the whole series, for this series and the rest of the playoffs. Yeah, I'm like, not going for not it. I'm happen. not going to rattle and me. And now that's going to get Draymond and Boogie more protective now. Like, I'm going to take, if anything else comes your way, we got you. Yeah. Mm. I, I can't believe, why wouldn't we see it as Patrick Beverly set the tone? No. How? How's he set the tone? What tone? What tone is he set? Do you hear the winds? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah first yeah, of all, are yeah. you, uh, first of all, uh, is, uh, yeah. were they down three or one? Was this a pivotal uh, moment? No. Yeah. Patrick Beverly, you're not doing he nothing. He set the tone. I didn't I even see get in KD's right. head. Patrick uh, Beverly's no. head was at his waist. He right. wasn't even bothering about no Patrick Beverly. And he's been loving him, him, he said, since Arkansas. All them games they played cool, back yeah. in the day. They boys, Chicago boy. That's all he got. That's all Patrick Draymond Beverly and LeBron are cool. But LeBron baited Draymond into some dumb stuff in the NBA Finals, and it cost him a championship. Man. Thank you for listening to the Hoops on Fox podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review letting us know what you think of the show.